My name is Chris Thorogood, I'm a botanist and a botanical illustrator and today it's my pleasure to be giving you a brief masterclass in the art of botanical illustration using watercolours and our subject today is going to be an iconically beautiful flower, it is the Strelitzia, the bird of paradise. It has a gorgeous shape and a wonderful texture and it's perfect for introducing colour washes to people who aren't used to using watercolours. It's a very easy technique, it's about building up colour incrementally wash by wash. So we're going to have some fun painting this one. The very first thing I'm going to do before I even put any water on the page is I'm going to use something called masking fluid in this area that I've marked out that I want to leave devoid of paint for the time being. These are going to be droplets on the surface of the bract. And if I want to apply lots of even washes, to try and do it around these fiddly droplets just wouldn't be possible. So by applying this masking fluid that we remove later when it's dry, after we've applied the washes that we want to add, it means that we don't interfere with the continuity of the colour. So you apply it quite liberally. You can see I've put a lot on here. Um, because it does have a propensity to leak a bit if you're if you're a bit stingy with it. So put a lot on And what's essential is that it's completely dry before you even dream of putting any water on the page. Another thing to note is it's best to use an old brush for the masking fluid rather than your best one uh, because it does interfere with the, um, the brush a little bit and, and make sure you use lots of warm soapy water to wash it off as well. Right, I'm going to leave that to dry before we add our first colour wash. So my masking fluid is completely dry and the very first thing I'm going to do after that is to liberally coat the area that I'm going to colour in with water and that will absorb into the paper and this is hot pressed paper which is great for botanical watercolours for getting detail and for withstanding large quantities of water. By wetting the surface, it means that when I put the first colour wash on, it will sit wonderfully smoothly, which is just what we want. So about a minute later, um, the colour has been absorbed into the page, and I'm now going to apply some very pale washes, of which I've made two colours. One is a yellowish green, and the other is a sort of pale fuchsia red colour. And we're just going to apply these first very pale washes. To either end. And then we're going to blend the pinky colour into it. It's a very general rule of thumb. You sort of want your first colour wash, which is often called a, a tea wash, because it's about the colour of tea, to be no darker and the palest bit that you want to show through at the end. And you can see it goes straight over those droplets that we added the masking fluid to, which is great. So I'm just blending the two colours a little bit at the edges there.
And then what I'm going to do, so now I've added my first tea wash. I'm just going to take a reasonably dry brush. And I'm going to run a series of, sort of stripes along the middle. That's our first wash and we can leave that to dry. So I let the first wash dry completely and I've just put another layer of water on top so I've made it nice and wet again. Now I'm going to go in with some much more vibrant, much darker colours. So I'm going to start with a lovely dark red and I'm going to go right in at the top there to give a nice red rim and this is a little bit too wet actually so I'm just going to use my tissue to take away some of that excess moisture now I'm going to go in with a slightly finer brush towards the tip of my bract don't worry too much about the messy edges at this point, as long as they're not terrible, we can go back and sort those out later. Beautiful. Now I'm going to go in with a more purplish red, to which I've added a little bit of blue. I'm going to go through that with some greyish blue. Note that I'm leaving a band in the middle a bit lighter to give some shine. And now towards the tip, we're going to go in with the green, greeny yellow colour. I'm going to get a dry brush and run through the middle to keep that light. Getting a finer brush for the bottom. Now I'm going to go back in with my sort of greyish, purplish colour to give a band of shadow at the base. Eventually, we're going to build that up to make it quite dark, but for now, this will do. The last glaze I did is completely dry and I'm just wetting it again. And if you let it dry completely before you wet it again, the colour fixes to the page. So you don't have to worry about it all running. Um, so what you've done will, will be fixed, it won't change. So now that's nice and wet. I don't want to flood it, but I do want it to be wet throughout. And now I'm going to go back over um, and add some even deeper colour 
I'm going to start with this deep greyish green, which will help give the appearance of a waxy bloom on the bract. And because the paper is so wet, you can see it really blends in beautifully. Also, I'm quite happy with that. I don't think I need much more of that one. Maybe a little bit more underneath. Notice that I'm leaving this band in the middle untouched. I'm quite happy with how that looks from the last glaze, and I don't really want to spoil it. Um, and it will show up nice and light against this new darker colour that I'm putting on. Lovely. Now I'm going to go in with the green. This particular bract seems to get much greener towards the tip. Again, leaving a clear band in the middle to give the impression of light. A bit more yellowy green running through that top bit. I really want to put some shadow in this area at the base here. So I'm going in with a dark chocolatey purple. So you have to be quite fearless sometimes. And with a wet brush, I'm just going to blend that back in. Happy with that. And then a little bit of brighter red at the top here. You have to work quickly because the paper is already drying and you, you can see that the colour isn't going on quite as smoothly. And finally for this glaze, I'm just going to add some shadow along the base using that same dark chocolate which I made by adding a dark blue to a brown colour. And I think that's it for now. I'm really happy with how the last colours dried. Um, so I don't think there's too much more to do now before adding some of the details. Um, but I do want to add that little bit more green, I think. So with a thin brush and some really dark paint on the end of my brush, I'm just going to run through onto the wet page again with a band of green. And I think that actually helps highlight the paler band of light that we've got running through the middle as well. So I'm really quite happy with how this is going. Again, you have to work quickly because you can see already, although I put a lot of water on, things are drying quickly. I'm 
can always run through with a slightly dry brush and pick up any excess paint. Overall, I'm quite happy with that. And I'm just going to wet the page again. Luckily for us, this paper is very enduring and will withstand a lot of wetting. And now, going back to that purplish colour that we used before, I'm just going to add some slight, very faint veins, which on the wet page just absorb and blend nicely. Really be careful not to overdo these. Um, they go on so nicely it can be tempting and you can get carried away and put too many on and it will really spoil the effect of this lovely smooth blended finish that we've managed to achieve. Just one last thing that I'm going to do and I'm going to do it with some care for the reasons I just said. I've got some white paint on the tip of my brush. I'm just going to scarcely even touch the page with this. Now the white paint is something that you always put on last because unlike the other colours, if you come back and try and do another glaze, it will not fix at all. It will just mobilise all over again and make a muddy white mess and really spoil your painting. Here I've got a dry brush with some white paint and it has this lovely chalky effect, which is perfect for adding highlights particularly to our bird of paradise because it does have that waxy bloom and so the sort of chalky white is really quite an accurate representation. And with some trepidation, slightly going against what I've just said, the temptation is a bit too great not to add a little bit here because it just it is going on so well. Many a painting has been ruined this way. But we've got to take some risks. Yeah, I think my risk paid off because that just looks really good. I think I'm pushing my luck now. And I'm really happy with that how that colour looks. So I think we're going to call that bract done, apart from the details and the drips, which I'm going to add next.